Al Campbell. Gentlemen, my right is Paul Hensey. We're going to be talking this afternoon about modular calling. Uh, it's 4.15 in the afternoon, and this is on Monday afternoon. Uh, Paul has been calling for over 32 years. He started clogging with his wife and so we could have a night together. We met several people who we, who were square dancing, enjoyed their company and started into a class. Since I had sung in the rock and roll band in college, I wanted to try a singing call that was dan, and was dared to do it. I got hooked. I got, I've got a similar one. All right. Went to Cal Golden's Gene Tremors Caller School and started mentoring with a local caller. I started training other callers locally and taught three, um, three schedules and became staff to several national callers colleges. Became Caller Labs accredited caller coach Became a Caller Lab accredited caller coach in 1994. Became vice chairman of the Caller Coaches Committee in 1996. And became chairman of the Caller Coaches Committee in 1998. Let's have a big hand for Paul Hensey. I guess that means I get to start, huh? We uh, have two handouts up here on the board for, or the table for you. One is for the uh, timing You'd be sure you got that. And there's also three sheets stapled together. If you'll unstaple those, pull them apart. And if you'll stack up the first sheet, make it the top sheet that we'll look at first is the one called modules. And if you notice on the back of that is a written summary information with chicken plucker, conversions, invert and rotate. We'll get into this shortly and show you this by defined square up front. Second page would be your zero box and zero line modules, if you'll have that number two. And, of course, you can understand what's going to be number three for the zero box, using zeros, equivalents, and conversions. Now, I need you to think today, as we're talking on our discussion, and I want to get a square up here shortly, I want you to think that you are a person that is qualified, and the person's come to you, and they want to learn how to mentor and through you and become a caller themselves. And in order to do this, you as an individual have to be able to think about, okay, I can do some modules, that's, which will work today. I can do a little bit of sight. I'm still dangerous. I'll know a little bit about this and a little bit about that. But what I'm mostly interested for you to know is that when most caller schools that I teach with several others around the nation, we're doing more and more modules. And the reason why is that you can get quicker on the floor and get your dancers dancing, and you as an individual can learn calling and how to move dancers so much quicker. Now, I want to think through you, with you, on three boxes, and that's all you need to concentrate when you get into the module calling. Module calling is going to be defined as a group of calls that move dancers from one known position, phaser we call it, to another phaser position. That's all you got to remember. And out of that, there's going to be three different thoughts, three boxes for you to think in terms of this. First box, get in. You're in a static square. You're standing there, one, two, three, four, and you know yourself what is a module for a get in. Anybody? Square through four. Good. Another one. That's well, another module. Touch your quarter and boys run. All right, you can also think of doing a left touch your quarter and the girls run. You get the idea? That's the first box. The th third box really is going to be your get outs. Now you're facing your zero box. What's a get out quickly? Swing and promenade or? Okay. Or you can? Alaman left out of this and promenade home. Get it? So you've already learned. Those are two boxes, and believe it or not, you're already doing what? Modules. Got it? You're already doing two parts of this. It's the center part. This middle box is what I want to work with you today on. Now, we're going to look specifically, if you'll turn the page over and look on the back page and see where it shows chicken plucker. 
convert zero box to zero line, invert and rotate, convert zero line to zero box, and invert and rotate from zero line. This is what I want to get a square up on the floor, and let me show you what we do in schools so that we can get you, if you're coming to school for the first time, we want to show you physically how you can quickly start calling. This scares a lot of guys to death. Oh, I can do a singing call. I can do this. I can do that. But. And what's the but? I'm not sure how to move dancers. And that's what I want to let you go from here today, knowing that this second portion is going to be this modular information that we're going to work with. Now, I need four couples on the square, on the square, please. Line them up. One, two, three, four. And those that are still sitting in the audience, if you'll have this sheet up that shows chicken plucker, and we'll walk you through some information so that you'll physically see firsthand what we're working with. I need one more girl, and I need another couple. I need one more girl, and I need another guy and a girl. Good. Got a girl coming. And one more couple if we can get another guy and a girl. Good. Notice how she's got him trained. And I need a lady for this man up up front here. One more lady. Okay. Okay, now we're going to do it just as if I'm going to let this back square or this back uh, couple be couple number one so everybody in the audience can see who it is. Or would you feel more comfortable making this number one? This one over here would be? You would rather me do the part from up here because I'll be walking around a little bit, okay? Which which can you see better? Will you use this one then? Okay, couple number one, couple number two, three, and couple number four. All right, what do we say was our first box? It's a get in. So give me a get in to go for my first box information. Head square through four, good. Now, remember, you're going to be working with new callers, and you're already getting them to dance, right? So you've already used a module, and you're starting to work them now. Now, we're going to, we've got them in a position here. This is called what in our terminology? Zero box. It tells me at any time I can do a left aisle of man and come back to home. Let's prove it. Do a left aisle of man and come back to your home position. Everybody understand what we've done? All right, let's go back to our another box again that we did the box earlier, and we have another get in. What's another get in besides the square through four? Okay, head star through, and California twirl. And we're looking again at a zero box. Now, go to the sheet, and we're looking at chicken plucker at this point in time. Now the dancer or the caller that's up in front has got the microphone going like this, and he says, I'm, I'm not sure. We're going to show him uh, chicken plucker at this point in time. And what I generally do is I say, all right, new caller, you choose one of these two inside men and you watch what they are doing. You follow them around and at a moment's notice, you'll know if you're going to start with this man here, which is Ted, we're going to have him follow around. And when he gets back to here, we'll know that we can call a left out of man. Let's work it through with the chicken plucker itself. Notice on your sheet, we've done the square through and with the zero box. Everybody do a right and left through. Pass through. Trade by. Do a right and left through. Pass through. Trade by. Now, we know at this point, if we've done everything correctly on the sheet with the, with the chicken plucker, we now know that we can call a left aisle a man. But since he's got his yellow or his gold uh, sweater on, we can watch him so much easier. And this is what I'll start doing right away in the, in the schools. I say, all right, we're going to watch this man this time. And as we start calling, I'm going to hold my hand above his head. And we're going to walk him around and watch what he's doing, okay? So do a right and left through. Now, I'm going to follow this man around. Pass through, trade by. Now, we'll stop at this point and we'll say, do you see at this point, can we do a left aisle of man? 
No, he's not home where he needs to be. We're working our modules, and we know this zero module of this chicken pluckers go to work. Let's prove it. Do a right and left through. Pass through. Trade by. Is he back home to where he is? And we can call our left dollar man. Got the point. This is what we've already, and we have this practice several times, and if you're not doing this yourself, start doing it. This is the first quick way to get you into this calling to someone else. Now, you're saying, okay, we've gone. Let's call this east and west. How do we get them over to the north and south? And we're still playing with the idea of a module. On your sheet, you'll notice it's called an invert and rotate from a zero box. Everybody got this on your page, invert and rotate. Notice what it says. Don't do it yet. It's a star through. Pass, don't do it yet. Pass through. Bend the line. And star through. Now, we're going to follow this man again, and we're going to see where he ends up, okay? Because in a technical way, we're changing the inside people, and they're going to become outside people. The outside are going to be swapping to the inside. So let's see if this is true. This is going to be what we call our saw a technical box. Okay? Star through. Pass through. Following my man in the sweater. Bend the line. And star through. Now, we've gone east-west, and we've now changed the dancers to north-south. Your dancers, when they're dancing, guess what? They don't know. They just think you're the swiftest thing since $35 bill came out, right? And all you're going to do at this point in time is got to stop and think, well, can I use this outside man to follow around? Well, those of you that were outside last time say, no, you can't do it. So we either got to go with the fella on the inside or we go over here with the other fella from here. Well, since we used your square last time and we has used this man on the inside here, we're going to follow him around this time. No, we don't want to use him because he is just going to be coming out and going back, coming out and going back. That's all he's going to be doing. Okay? I'll show you in just a minute why. All right, we're going to follow him around. I'm going to follow him around again. Go back to your chicken plucker module. Do a right and left through. Pass through. Trade by. Do a right and left through. See what I'm talking about. Pass through. Trade by. And what do we know we can do at this point? Do a left dollar man. So you see, no, don't do it yet. We've, you can see on our dancing back and forth, you see what we've been able to quickly do. And we've inverted and rotate is what we call this. Now your people can start thinking, gosh, I've done three modules quickly. I've done a get in, head square through. I've done a chicken plucker, okay, east and west. I did an invert and rotate east and west. I went from north to south, if you will. And I can do a chicken plucker from here. Well, if you stop and think by putting a record on, you've almost done half to three quarters of a four minute record. Okay? And we've just done those two good modules after our get in. Okay? If we go to invert and rotate and change it back to a east-west, what's our module again? I'll buy a new sheet. Call it out. Star through. Pass through. Bend the line. And star through. Bing. There we are. Right? And now we're right back to the same thing that we had before. Now, you notice we've been dancing what we call boxes at this point. Everybody understands a zero box and how we're working. But you've got a lot of dancers that you know that like to dance, and you've seen quite a few lines, people dancing out of lines. All right, how do you convert a box, a zero box, to a zero line? This is a module also. Step to a wave. Look on your sheet. How do we convert it? Notice what happens. Watch. Swing through. Girls circulate. Boys trade. Boys run, bend the line, and what do you have? You got zero lines. Zero lines means to us that at any given time we can do a left out of man and we can promenade back to our home position. The problem is, is what? The center dancers don't always have relationships in their mind. My suggestion, everybody join hands, circle to the left, do a left out of man, Promenade your partner back home.
Now, once again, I've, let's go from the static square. Let's put them in, and let's use something besides the square through to get them into box or the second number box we're going to work with. What is it? If you want to get them in to zero box. Okay, heads. Let's go uh, heads. Uh, star through. Do a right and left through. And then pass through. It's another module to do a what? We call this an equivalent to a square through. Module again, we're working with our people. If we wanted again to change this zero box to a zero line, let's start it. Say it. Swing through. Girls. Boys. Boys. Bend the line. Everybody see that? We're in the zero lines. Now, we've also got an invert and rotate for a zero line. This means that if we're facing north and south here, we can change this to a east and west. This simple. Module. Pass through. Bend the line. Do a right and left through. That simple. Module. We changed it north-south to a east-west. One more time. Let's change this one to back to north-south. Pass through. Help me out. I forgot. Be in the line and a right and left through. Okay. Now, we have danced lines for a while. We've got the people to recognize lines as a module. We've got them to recognize how to change the line north-south to east-west. Now we want to change them back and dance some more boxes. If you'll notice the next uh, one there that talks converting a zero line, which we have, to a zero box, what is it? Touch a quarter, go. Column circulate. Boys run around these girls. Notice our man in the sweater. Ah, he's back to where we can call a what? Left dollar man. Okay, you ever get the idea? Okay, do a left dollar man, come back. Promenade back to your home position, and you should be home. Now, any questions at this point as we've worked the square back and forth, we know we can get them in with a module. We've gone through this, square through or touch a quarter, etc. Once we get them in there, we can do a what back and forth? Dancing the dancers, chicken plucker. Okay. We can then do an invert and rotate, which is a... Star through, pass through, bend the line, star through. We've changed this direction to east-west direction. And then we found through modules that we can go from that boxes into facing lines and then how to invert and rotate the lines. Our get out is what? That's our third box that we're trying to think about and incorporate into our mind. What is that going to be? From uh, any right now. If you want to do, I, I tell you what, heads touch a quarter. Good question. Boys run around those girls. At this point, we know our get out would be for our third thoughts of, is what? Do an Alamo man left, good. Come back. Do an Alamo man left, everybody. And then come back to your home position. On the zero box, zero line modules, and you've got the sheet here, any questions that you need to think about so far? If you'll look under the module system, let me show you three more things, and then we'll turn it over to Cal. Heads touch a quarter. Boys run around these girls. Now, we've got a couple of zeros here that we need to think about, and we're going to call this a true zero, a true zero. You've heard of the call an eight chain or an eight chain through. You can put any numbers that you want to this. This is what you would think of as a true zero. You can either bring them back to the, the standpoint here, or you can take them over to the other side. For instance, do an eight chain four. Go. Count it. One, two, three, four. Now, can you at this point look at your square? Can you do an Alaman left? Yes, you can, because you've just done a module. And you brought them around to where you know you're looking at your corner. Yes. All right. Let's try it again. Do an eight chain four. One, two, 
three, four. What can we call at this point? Alaman left. This is what we call a true zero. We just did a invert and rotate, and we can put a name to that as a module, and we'll call that a technical zero. Watch it again. Star through, pass through, bend the line, star through. And what do we know we can call here to get them back home? Alaman left. Will it work? Sure, let's try it. Do an Alaman left. Promenade your partner back home. So we've looked at two zeros. We've looked at a true zero and a technical zero. Hold the question until we just get through, okay? Heads again, touch a quarter. I'm staying with the heads. I could do the sides, but I think everybody understands. Um, run around that girl. Go. We've got another zero we can look at, and this would be called a geographic zero. Geographic means that I will call some calls and bring the dancer I'm looking at back to his X on the floor. If you look down, you'll see an X on the floor right now. Okay. We can do some common modules here. Here's one that we all know. Swing through. Boys run around those girls. Do a Ferris wheel, and centers pass through. That's what we call a module also. We've got it memorized. These are things that we can think of of using. We know our main man that we're looking at here is able to look back at his corner, as is everyone else, and we can do an Alaman left. And this is why we call it geographic, because we come back to the same footprints that you're at now, geographic. Geographically, we're right back, Okay. Try it one more time so you can watch it. Swing through. Boys run around those sexy girls. Do a Ferris wheel. And centers pass through. Okay. The only other zero that we need to think about would be what we call a fractional zero, another type of module. And it means we must call a call, what, more than once either two or three times to get back to our particular position that we want to arrive at. Let's do it easy. Do a right and left through, and that's one fraction, and do a right and left through. We fractional it, and we did it twice, and we're right back. Or another fraction, star through, star through, star through. And star through. And if you notice there, we did it four times. But you get the idea for what you can fractionalize and end up with a particular call to give you what you need for the information. Now, if you're stopping to think about my original premise that I mentioned with you, you're working with callers, with new callers, hopefully. If it's yourself, you're thinking through what I can do, are you trying to work with a mentoring person in your area, or you yourself are going to be trying to work through your mind, maybe this gave you a better identification with seeing some things actively back and forth. You can own it. You can identify it with it. Take this information. Take it home. Look at it more in depth and then be able to play with it. Let's give our dancers up here a good, good hand. Thank you very much. Now, if you'll look at the last thing that I need you to, to look in terms of, look on your sheets and you'll notice there are equivalents. You'll notice that we've helped you out a little bit. We've given you some zero box modules like we did just then, swing through, boys run, Ferris wheels, pass through. We've given you some zero box and also some zero line modules for you to take Memorize, look at, etc. We've also given you another sheet there that says using the zero equivalents and conversions. And you saw the box half zero that we did, and you see some other variations there for to play with. The equivalents on the back, you can look at this in your own leisure. Try modules. I guarantee you, if you can command and know your modules, and you can watch your man that you're working with, the head man on the floor. If you feel better, and I know lady callers feel better looking at a lady, 
then look at whichever one gives you the best understanding and let that person become your, your guide all around. But stay with that person. Watch where they are. If they're on that floor position that you want, left dollar man, you're cool. Thank you very much. All right. That's quick. I'll tell you what. Why don't I swap? Oh, yeah. We had a you. question back here, Cal, I think. Okay. Please state your name for the tape. Uh, Henry Grissett from Los Angeles, California. I like. I, I guess I was confusing. Well, think, thinking of the zero, of the uh, zeros being a little bit different. I was always thinking an absolute zero was the was what you described as being the the geographic zero, and a technical zero as being putting you in different positions, but in the st- in the same formation to do the Alaman left. And so it's just you just cleared it up a little bit for me. Thank you. Okay. Uh, when I found out they were going to have a facility like this where we could actually project, I went ahead and put together a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, this is what? Yeah. I did, I did this about four years ago, and uh, we had to borrow all kinds of equipment. I decided I was never going to do it again. But you guys get to see it. This is the trick. First, give it, let me give you just a little bit of my background. I've been calling 54 years. I learned starting in the 50s, obviously, and I had a very poor memory. Uh, at that point in time, everything were memorized calls. Uh, we got up into where we were starting to work into modules, and I met somebody by the name of Bill Peters. Bill Peters had a system which I have adopted and almost all of square dancing adopted. This is where I get our terminology, zero line and zero box. How many of you have heard the idea of, of box one, four lines? Okay, box four lines are one of two zero boxes. How many of you have heard the terminology 1P, 2P lines or 4P, 1P lines? This was the terminology that was the original terminology. Bill consolidated it down into something that was more universal. Bill also had 16 of these things that he memorized. And I looked at this and it said, there ain't no way Cal can do this. And I, what I did was go through and take a look at the materials written. Almost all of it was being written from three FASRs, zero square, Zero box and zero line. I wanted to have some sort of a way to be able to take material, put it into a computer, and go back and be able to find the ideas once again. I couldn't deal with the 16, but I could very easily set up a system to deal with the zero square to zero line or zero box, zero box to zero box, zero line to zero line, and the get-outs that were involved with him. And of course, the get-outs were fascinating to all of us. This is a trick beyond all of that, and it gets into what he has talked about just a little bit, called fractional and nested zeros, all right? Fractional zeros must be repeated two or three times. You've already covered that. Here's one. Half fractional zero, right lift through, dive through, zoom, centers pass through, and if you repeat that two twice, here's a starting position. Here's one time through the module, and here's the ending position. What happened? It flip flops the set. In other words, if you started out with the number two man and or the number two couple. In the home position, at the end of it, the number two couple or the number four couple is now over here. Let me get a cursor down here. Whoops, where I can do it. Let me back up. Ah, oh, come on. Don't do this to me. There we go. And so we have the number four couple here to start with, and we have the number four couple here flip flop. Just the same as you would do with an 18-4. 
This is important for you to know in terms of being able to play with it because basically I feel that once you move this couple away from their home spot, they have no idea where the left alaman is going to come from. If you rotate the set like he does, they've got a little bit of an idea because that couple is now back at home. But if you flip-flop the set and put them down in the bottom, they don't know where the alum left is coming from. It's a total surprise. In other words, once you've got them away from their home base, you know what the set looks like. They don't know. They're not thinking that term. One third fractional zero that I'm going to use for this particular demonstration is zero line to zero line, and you repeat this one three times, and it's pass through, wheel and deal, double pass through, centers in, and cast off three quarters. If you take a look at this particular zero and you want to be working uh, wheel and deals, you're going to find that your couples are going to be going through a lot of essentially uh, different formations and different FASRs as they do this. I happen to feel that doing routines that the dancers uh, kind of get to the rhythm of is a good thing. I'm not the kind of caller that wants to surprise them all the time. What I want to do is get them into a pattern, let them enjoy the pattern, and then proceed from there. Okay? And this one, if you pass through, here's where you are. Wheel and deal, here's where you are. Double pass through, here's where you are. Okay? Centers in. And cast off three quarters, look what we have. Two guys on one end, two ladies on the other. Now we've got to go through this same routine three times to make it zero out. Okay, let's start out. Here's our starting position. Pass through, wheel and deal, double pass through, put centers in, and cast off three quarters. Now we got the guys in the center, the ladies on the end. Okay, third time through it, we've got the starting point, pass through, wheel and deal, double pass through, centers in, cast off three quarters. Okay, this particular one rotates the quarter or rotates the entire square 90 degrees. It doesn't invert anything. It just rotates the square 90 degrees. We've got exactly the same line, which would be in the old language, a 1P, 2P line. But we rotated that square. I'll guarantee you that the people, if you call a star through, square through three quarters from here as a get out, they would be surprised when they find their corner coming out of it. Okay. This is star F, the NFASR. Advantage to the dancers. Advantage to the dancers, they've moved through what I call a big pattern. In other words, they've gone someplace. They just haven't gone dive through, pass through, right and left through, dive through, pass through, right and left through. What does this do? It basically, if we only use the chicken plucker, it glues two couples to the floor like iron. Where if you can rotate the set, what you've done is taken them out of their nice little comfortable position on the floor and you've moved them through a big pattern. And I think this is an advantage. All right? It uses several arrangements or FASRs. While they're doing it, it's going to take a little while, particularly in a training situation, to get them through this. But they'll pick up real quick on the fact that this is a bigger pattern. What have you done? You're starting to build a whole pattern. A doodle, if you want to take a look at it that way. And by doing the doodle, they're getting, oh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm coming through this. This feels good. Why do you think people like spin chain through? They like spin chain through because it's a big pattern. It's part of something longer and bigger. And I happen to think that the majority of the people who dance really respond very well to that. It uses folding and unfolding actions in this particular module. And there's a high level of dancer success once they, once they get into it. Pages for the caller.
five calls to memorize. A string of five calls. And when you get done running through it three times, you have a string of 15 movements that they've gone through. Okay? You can watch the entire dance floor, which I love to do, because particularly these days, a lot of my key sets blow up and go down the tubes. All right? And you don't have to worry about key squares at all. You're in control. I never try to sight call at a convention. Never try to sight call at a convention. Everything I have is made up of modules because I don't have to worry about this set or this set or that one back there with the guy with the bald head and the, and the fat lady. Shouldn't have said that. All right. Zeros from other formations. Most zeros are published in either zero lines or zero boxes. And this becomes a very good story point. A zero is a zero is a zero. Think about it. If you put together a zero that go, comes from a zero box and goes back to a zero box, or comes from a zero line and goes back to a zero line, it is true for every other formation it passes through. Okay? This one goes swing through, centers run, Ferris wheel, centers pass through. On that particular one, if you want to make it and put all those formations in a circle, and you start from the A chain through, if it goes through an ocean wave, it goes through a two-phase line, and it goes through a double pass through. Which means that you can start any place on this loop, anywhere. If you start from the swing through and you get to here, and you go all the way around the loop and you come back to here, you have a zero for a swing through line. Okay? Ocean wave line, I should say. This is, this is great power because in this one you not only have one zero, you really have four that you can use. There's another characteristic about it I'll point out in just a, bit, a little bit. Here's three more, four more, uh, three more modules. Centers run, Ferris wheel, Centers pass through, swing through. From a two-phase line, you would start on the Ferris wheel, loop it around. You're just following the circle. Double pass through, loop it around. Okay? There's another characteristic about this particular module is what's called no gender ID modules, NGIs. Basically, you do not have to identify the men and the women. If you call swing through, does it require, you could have four men in the row, you could have any arrangement along the line, and you don't care. All right? And I think really it doubles, more than doubles the usefulness of the modules. Okay, here's the trick at Bill Todd. When I found this, I was so excited I couldn't hardly stand it. You need to have a primary zero and a secondary zero. And you can nest the two together. The secondary zero in this example must be an NGI. Because if you're going to use it within this particular setup, you must have an NGI. All right? We're going to use as a primary zero... The one I showed you, the pass-through, the wheel and deal, the centers in, and cast off three quarters. And if you remember, we ended up with a lot of different combinations in that particular zero. Okay? And then we're going to add to it a secondary zero that is centers pass-through, swing-through, centers run, Ferris wheel. No gender identification needed. All right? Here's the intersection point. We're going to do the intersection of these two zeros at the point where we do a wheel and deal and we have a double pass through position. You with me so far? Any questions? Because this is it's going to be important that you understand this much at this point to follow the rest of it. All right. 
By the way, the uh, the whole PowerPoint presentation is supposed to be on a CD that you're going to get so that you can run this later on and follow it through. If you have trouble with it, call me. Yes, sir. What did uh, NGI stand for? No gender identification. In other words, there are a string of calls which you call that do not require that you identify the man and the woman. And if you think about it, swing through, centers run, Ferris wheel is a real good example. Okay? So we're going to pull these two, and we got the intersection point right up here where the little red lines are. i got to quit remember to point to my screen and point to this screen. <laughs> okay. If you notice what I've done here is I've got these outdented and then your secondary indented. And then the rest of the module, that's the primary module, outdented. And this is the point where you are at a double pass-through position. Here's your start point. Centers pass-through. Swing through, center's run, and Ferris wheel. That's the little secondary one that goes in here. So what you're going to do is you're going to go up here, you're going to pass through, wheel and deal, and then you're going to put in your secondary module. That's going to be a center's pass through, swing through, center's run, Ferris wheel, and then you're going to jump back out into the other ring, and you're going to call double pass through, center's in, and cast off three quarters. Okay, so far pretty tame, all right? Now we go to the second time through the loop. Once again, you're going to do this one, and then you're going to insert within that a pass-through, wheel and deal, excuse me, pass-through, wheel and deal, and then go centers in, swing through, centers run, Ferris wheel, and then complete out the loop. Are we all right so far? Here we go. This is where you're going to be at the end, all right? Now, third time through the loop. Once again, the little routine. What are we going to do? You tell me. We're going to follow it down the line, and what is it going to look like as far as for, for what the dancers are doing? Okay. All right, at the end of this, you're going to be back to zero lines, and the square is once again could be rotated or put in a lot of other configurations that may or may not be rotating, depending on what the secondary is doing. But the important thing is you know, you know that they're back in zero lines if they haven't screwed up. Now, admittedly, when you start into doing these things, you're into a situation where you are putting your dancers into probably more complex combinations of people than many of the dancers can do at this point in time. But by making it into a routine, people memorize little routines, short routines, very quickly. And after you've gone through the first one, and if you've been patient with them a little bit, Doing the second one is more complex or doing the third one is a little bit more complex. They'll get into, oh, yeah, I've been here before. And they're in a comfort zone that allows them to be getting into the rhythm of what the routine is doing. Uh, I did a session or listened to Butch Adams, and he and I think much the same. I think one of the mistakes that we make is we do not allow people to get into comfort routines. We keep trying to jar them out because they think they're bored. And in Butch's opinion, and in my opinion, they're not bored. What they want to do is get into something that's comfortable and do it and enjoy the music. And they're very happy doing this. I'm not going to do this sort of thing all night. But they're very happy doing it. When we get into it, oh, yeah, that's Cal's so-and-so routine. 
But by doing it and nesting other things in this and putting in other equivalents, you could literally create a whole dance out of wheel and deal. Certainly you can create a whole, a whole, um, tip out of wheel and deal. And you can really exercise the dancers in going through different things. Okay. This is an introduction to a very, very powerful tool. It's going to require studying homework. Uh, to build these things up, I, what I've done is I've wrote two books about modular calling, and I also wrote a column in Square Dance Magazine for three years before it shut down. I haven't got the stuff in the columns done, but I took the stuff out of the book when it went out of, out of print, and I updated it and put it into a PDF, and I put it into a Word file. Uh, you were supposed to get a CD. I don't know what happened to it. But if you will get hold of me, I'll be more than happy to give you the PDF or uh, the Word file. And in that particular setup, there are 30-some different what I call themes. This is a theme. And I've got 30-some different themes with multiple setups Zeros and get outs. And basically it shows you how I do and store information uh, in order to organize it for my feeble brain. It's worth the effort. I've called for 54 years. I went from being a memory caller to a modular caller to a site caller, almost a fanatic site caller. And you want to know where I am right about now? I'm back to memory and modules. That's where I'm back to. I'm back to memory and modules because, for me at least, it allows me to organize my dance better than I could by just grabbing a mic, putting it up to my mouth, and hoping something good comes out. Now, many times when I'm in there and I'm trying to do something uh, with this, it doesn't work, and I have to back off and replan. But what has happened for 54 years is I have a ton of material I can fall back on. And I don't have to worry about key squares. In other words, I can be a site caller if everything's going fine, but, boy, when it goes to the pot, I come back to modules or I come back to memory. That's where I'm at. All right. People to thank my mentor. Bill Peters. Uh, if you want to find some material from him, Palomino is still selling his Magic Modules book and Modules Galore, and it's a treasure. The other stuff I'm doing, it's yours for free. Thank you. Okay, I wanted to leave about 15 minutes for questions. I think we've got at least 14. Uh, you're open to anything you want to talk about. They modules are a form of minimization. Yeah. Sorry, Wendy Vandermulen from Ottawa, Canada. Uh, you were saying that you went from memorization to modules, but they sound like the same thing. As I define memorization, it's whole routines from start to finish, where modules are a form of memorization, but they are give you more flexibility as how you can use them. In other words, I've got a routine that I memorized. It's called Ocean Sand. It's about 20 calls in a row. And I have to memorize the other one. It's a lot easier for me to memorize five and five and five. By the way, I write nothing in the way of modules that is more than seven in a string. You know why? It's proven at telephone numbers don't want to be more than seven characters because you can't remember and so I figured that works for them, works for me. Okay? Sharon Murphy, Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, you're doing like two times through or three times through. Can you, can't you break it up there instead of just, okay, here where she goes again, calling this same sequence through again? There's, I mean, we got some smart people out there, a few of them. Can we just stick in another equivalent for one of those oh, yeah. things and just kind of keep building from there? Or do you lose track of where you are? 
Okay, what are the commons that are in there? We have uh, places where we have star throughs. There used to be a book uh, that was 101 star throughs, star through equivalents. And so any place that you would use a star through or right and left through or two ladies chain, there are literally hundreds of equivalents that you could use to do the same thing. Swing through, spin the top, right and left through. What is that? It's a star through equivalent. If I'm sitting there on the floor and I want to follow the floor, it's a lot easier for, for me to follow the floor following a star through than is to think about all the stuff that's going on, on the floor if I do a swing through, spin the top, right and left through. And so even sight-wise on the floor, I'm sitting there and I'm saying, okay, brain, what do you want to do next? I think star through, I do swing through, spin the top, right and left through while I think about where I want to be next. Does that make sense? I think two ladies chain and I do whatever module that I have that makes two lays chain. You can insert those any place that you find those. Right and left through is the third one. And if you go out and take a look, you'll find tons of equivalents for right and left through. What's a good equivalent for a pass through? You no. Know? Yeah, fear left, be right. It's a pass through. That's well how you think of it. You know, could you write down a dozen? You bet you could. Yeah, you bet you could. You, you could write down a dozen real quick. Okay, write and lift through with a full turn. That's a theme. In other words, if you do a write and lift through with a full turn, you're in the same position you are with a pass through. Okay, if you insert this in a routine that you already got, then you can build a theme around this right and left through with a full turn. And the dancer will go, wow, that's neat. Okay, anybody else? Gosh, folks, we've got ten minutes left. Does this make sense to you? Yeah. You know, and for me, one of the most important things is that I've been doing this, as I say, I've been probably been modular caller for now for about 40 years or better. I have a storehouse of some 400 to 500 modules that I've culled from probably three or 4,000 that I can now go back and build up themes to plan a program for a night. And I am a real hardhead about the fact that I always want to walk into a dance with a plan. Most of the time I don't get to exercise all that plan as planned, but at least I've got a start point. One thing you have to realize <clears throat> in caller schools, a lot of times you go, if you're, if you're honest with yourself, you go so you can learn what? Sight. But sight is only good, like Cal is talking about, if you know at any given time that you can do something and get them back. So what do we do if you're thinking logically, if you're thinking sight? You're always worried about where to get back to that left dollar man position, and the whole time you're calling, left dollar man, where is it? Left dollar man, where is it? But in a module, you own it. You know exactly what that module is going to do, and you never worry about getting to your left element. So you're flexible. You call it. You go. You invert and rotate like we showed you. You change to lines. You change back to boxes. You know where you are, and that is what Cal is saying. That's the beauty of where the box is. It can't let you down. It won't let you down. Question in the back. Gardner Patton, New Jersey. When you uh, go out to do a dance and you plan, what does your plan look like? Does it have module names or do you have cards with modules that you shuffle or what, what would it actually look like? I grew up in an era where you learned to call and my mentors at that point in time said, when you plan a program, you should plan a program on a curve. And so I will go and use in the early squares themes and concepts 
that are going to be a little bit more complex in the second tip and perhaps a little bit more complex in the third tip and then relax down and that curve in the fourth tip and in the fifth tip and the sixth tip we may just play but the, for me there's there's a it, if you plan on what you're doing you can build the dancers in small increments into stuff that they really couldn't do if you just hit one of them blank, right on the head. Where if you take and plan ahead, you can do this sort. For instance, I would never try nesting a zero in here until I was quite certain that they could do the zero, the, the fractional one third zero to head. All right. Come on, come on up. We need to get this on tape. Let's just take one tip. If I looked at your outline for one tip, would it just say one concept that you're doing, or would it say three modules? It would say three modules for me. In other words, I would I would have the modules down. And in, in this particular case, if you go get the Word file, uh, you're going to find that each of these themes has at least two uh, setup modules that will do the same sort of thing within the theme at least three, but sometimes four zeros, and at least two get-outs. From that combination of stuff, which I can read through in 30 seconds and have temporarily in my mind, so I don't have to look at those notes, but it, that's enough to do it. I've also made up a set of cards, literally laminated with this stuff, that has all this in shorthand, you know, CL, RLT, all this stuff in shorthand uh, to where I can pull one of those cards out. Uh, sometimes when I do that, I'll lay out two or three cards, and if the set crashes, the whole floor crashes, I've immediately got stuff that I can pick up to be able to, to back away from what I was trying to accomplish and go to something that they can do. I always have that. Uh, frankly, I also have... Uh, the stuff that sometimes people kid me about from the standpoint of when I'm, my mind is in brain freeze, they say, oh, you know, cows in brain freeze, there it goes again. And you can't stay there very long, but dancers are very tolerant. You know, dancers are very tolerant. Uh, the other thing, it, it's a ball, is pushing the dolls. I wish I could encourage all of you, set up a set of teacups, checkers, draw it on a page or whatnot, but explore the possibilities. And if you're building modules, you could explore the possibilities. And the other thing is, keep your modules as short as you can because that builds discipline on your part and builds the tools for you to be able to resolve a square. And if you're going to be able to resolve a square as a site caller, you had better be able to do it most of the time in three moves. Uh uh, Ted Rotwood, Bluebell, Pennsylvania. Um, uh, the question I think he was asking, and I'm still not clear on, is what do I? What do you have in front of you? Uh, let's let's get away from are uh, you memorizing something? Do you have names for these modules, and you write down the names? Do you have the actual chore 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 choreography written written out? Do you, you know how do you? Okay. What, what do you take with you? What does it look like that you that you reference? <sighs> Yeah. Um, I don't have names for modules. I have themes within modules. Uh, I have a set that says uh, I'm going to do things with centers and ends, modules that do things with the center couple and the end people. I have modules built around particular basics. Maybe I'll have a set of modules built around spin chain through. And then when I start a theme, I try and keep the theme fairly consistent between the get-ins, the zeros, and the get-outs. I always have the option, because I'm using modules, of using a completely different get-in and a completely different get-out with the center part being built around, say, for instance, spin chain through. Does that make sense to you? Uh, no, I, I think I'm still, I still want to know. What it looks like on a piece of paper or a, or a set of cards that you have. What is it that you – you're explaining to me what's on the cards. I want to know what 
what it looks like. You know, how do you – once you come up with a – whatever you're going to do for that night, your plan, what does it look like on a piece of paper or a set of cards? Oh, okay. You're, you want to look at the whole outline, right? Yeah, what does it look like? How do you outline? So I think that's – I'm not sure if that's the question he was asking, but that's what yeah. I thought he was asking. I, 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 my themes have names. Right. And I'll start out and say, okay, this one's going to be working with Star Through. The uh, next one's going to be working with uh, Pass Through Wheel and Deal. The third tip is going to be working with, uh, I don't know, Spin Chain Through. The fourth tip is going to be thus and such. And what I'm doing at that point is building my curve, building them up to a point, and then sliding it down. And it includes the singing calls. Okay, uh, so far, what, what, what I heard you say is you have the name, uh, an overall theme and what you're doing on each tip, but is there any detail in there other than that one line? Do you have... Sure, I've got, I've, I've got, the, uh, I've got the themes written out either on a card or on an 8.5 by 11 sheet paper. So you're taking those cards along? That's right. All right, now, oh, thank you. What, watch Marjorie Flipple Flipple sometime. Marshall is a, primarily a memory caller. And between tips, you will find Marshall Flipple back there leafing through his notebook trying to figure out what he's going to do next. In my, in my age, well, Marshall's much older than I am. You had your little black book. And all of it was memorized calls at that point, but you had the little black book. There's nothing wrong with the little black book. You don't want to use a little black book in front of your face and not watch the floor. But, boy, I've got my little black book. It's a very extensive little black book. Question? Hi, Richard Sharman, Ottawa. Um, what about error recovery? Let's say you've got your module and you, you mess it up, and you're not ending up back where you, you're supposed to be doing. That's why I became a, a site caller. Uh -huh. I use site calling very much to get myself out of trouble. Let me add one thing. You, you've got to watch your floor. I don't care if it's modules or site or whatever you're calling. And what I do when I get on the floor, I'm interested in three calls and what the dancers are going to do to it. Circulates, trades, folds. If I know my dancers can do circulate, trades, and folds, then I feel comfortable with my modules at that point. But if I notice something that's happening with my dancers, if any one of those, what am I going to stay away from? Something that's going to make that one of those three fall on me. So use a little caution when you put dancers into certain positions. Okay. We are now at 15 minutes after the hour. We thank you for coming. Uh, for the purposes of the tape, uh, my email address is cal at sign e-a-z-y dot net. And if you write, you can have any of the stuff I've talked about here. There's no charge. It's public domain at this time. It's yours. Thank you.